I then checked autotrader.com and he said that I had paid for the car, not once, but twice. The only thing I had from this seller was his name and his phone number. I didn't know where he lived. Uh, I just knew that my money was gone from my account. That's when the stress and the anxiety kicked in. It was a headache, like literally, it was a really, really bad week for me. Hey guys, hi, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about a recent experience that I had with the Auto Trader Private Seller Exchange or PSX for short. And my testimony is important because I did both at the same time. I bought a car from a private party and I also sold my car to a private party through the use of PSX. If you're thinking about buying or selling a car privately, this is definitely something you want to know about because in this video, I'll tell you what it is, how it works, the pros and cons, and if I recommend it. I also will tell you what I learned from using it and how you can save time if you decide to buy or sell a car through PSX. But most importantly, I'll share with you a worst case scenario that actually happened to me that could have cost me thousands of dollars if it wasn't because my wife bailed me out of the problem. And if you want to know exactly what happened, just skip to this time in the video so you don't have to watch anything else if you're not interested. But I appreciate if you stick for the duration of the video because it helps me grow. So what is PSX? Basically, it is a service from Auto Trader that makes private party sales way easier and possibly safer. PSX acts as a middleman that handles all the annoying stuff like verifying identities, transferring titles, and even handling the money. And here's how it works. You list your car on Auto Trader, and when a buyer is interested, PSX steps in. They verify both of the identities to make sure that no one is a scammer, provide vehicle history reports, and even offer a free pre-sale inspection for sellers. I didn't use this feature because I pay for my car outright, but it's a requirement for those financing their purchase through PSX lending partners. PSX handles the payment and the title transfer, saving you a trip to the DMV. It also makes sure that the money is securely exchanged between parties and that the title is properly transferred. In my case, this process wasn't as smooth, but I'll tell you about it later. It was a headache, like literally, it was a really, really bad week for me. Now, let me explain the process through the seller's perspective. First, you list the vehicle, then buyers can contact you through a secure messaging system. So basically, you're not posting your personal email address or your phone number. And this secure messaging system is cool because it hides your identity and minimizes the risk of getting scammed. One of the last few times that I used AutoTrader, that was one of the things that was annoying. You get all these weird calls from people trying to scam you or getting unwanted calls from those agents that call you to offer to sell the car for you for a fee. After you agree with the price or at a price with the buyer, PSX will take over and they handle the payment, the title transfer, and even offer financing options for the buyer. And this is very important because if you're old enough, you'll remember that Auto Trader used to be a paper publication that used to come out on Thursdays. So you rushed early in the morning to 7-Eleven to get one of those so that you will see all the prospects that you will be checking out on the weekend. And that's all I did. And now it offers an array of services to make the purchase or the sell more secure. The major drawback from buying a car from a private party is the financing part. A lot of people just don't have the funds to pay for a car up front. So that pushes people to a used car dealership that offers expensive financing options and pay a lot for a car knowing that they could have gotten a better deal from a private party only if they had the funds to pay for the car outright. And that's one of the main things that I like about PSX is that it offers financing. And among other things, it could also offers you like uh, extended service agreements and um, gap insurance and stuff like that uh, to private party buyers. And I just don't know how competitive their rates are. And I still recommend that you first go through your local credit union to see, check out the rates because in my experience, credit unions tend to offer better rates than regular banks. I've used them in the past and the rates were lower than what you could get directly from a dealership on a used car. I was nervous about buying the last car. The transaction was not smooth at all, like I said earlier. First of all, the Auto Trader ad was not detailed at all. And uh, the seller, a nice older gentleman, wasn't the best at returning messages. And secondly, the seller was about three hours away. And since he wasn't the best and easiest to communicate with, it took days to gain his attention. The car was a desirable prospect and I was afraid to miss out on a great deal. I mean, it wasn't a great deal, but it was definitely a great car. We finally agreed to meet for a test drive and he went by the textbook according to PSX. 
they recommended him to meet at a public place, that he shouldn't show up alone, and that no cash should be exchanged at the meet. I loved the car, but it was the weekend, and the only thing that we could do was agree on a price and submit my offer through PSX and wait. And I'll be honest with you, I did try to offer him cash, but he felt uneasy and I just didn't want to press. I went home and that Sunday night, I went through the purchasing process on the website and submitted my payment through autotrader.com and this is where it gets tricky, nasty, and ugly. The website did not accept my payment and gave me an error message saying that my financial institution had declined the charges. I tried again and I got the same message, but first let me tell you that Autotrader offered me three ways in which I could pay for the car and they were an electronic payment transfer, a wire transfer, and a debit or credit card payment. I went with the first option, an electronic bank transfer, because I believed at that moment that it would be the fastest and cheapest way to verify funds. I will guess that the most convenient way would be to pay with a credit card, but there's a processing fee of over 3% and that would be too much money. So let's say it was in about an $8,000 car, so that would be $240 to pay for the car, so I just didn't want to do it. And a wire transfer, honestly, I didn't know that they existed any longer and I was never familiar with them and I just don't know how they work, so it was never an option. So after the second attempt, I decided to wait until the next day, like I was saying earlier, I just abandoned the idea of paying for it on a Sunday night, so I waited for the morning. And the first thing that I did in the morning was uh, check my bank account. And I remember that that's when the stress and the anxiety kicked in. It might've been like 8.15 after checking that there were no pending or declined transactions on my checking account. And it was a relief to see that there were any charges on my account, but I still wanted to talk to a breathing human and they assured me that there were no pending or declined transactions. I then checked autotrader.com and it said that I had paid for the car, not once, but twice. So autotrader.com charged me twice for the car, nearly $17,000, but those charges hadn't hit my checking account yet, so the bank could not stop payment. The two transactions were in limbo because autotrader said not to worry that once the transactions clear with them, they will just cancel one of them. But the problem is I'm not made out of money and th there was a lot of payments that were pending on my checking account. I had to ask my wife for some money to have enough to cover the monthly commitments that I have on auto pay, like my credit card that I pay in full every month and also my car payment that is over a thousand dollars. And understand that if they would have been deducted from my account, I would have been uh, in the red. I wouldn't have enough money to cover these recurring payments and I would have been hit with all the penalties and late fees. Finally, my bank agreed to decline one of the transactions for the car, but it wasn't easy because it required me to send signed paperwork back and forth. I mean, I signed it electronically, but it was back and forth. Having um, the risk of having Auto Trader flag my form of payment as fraudulent, therefore aborting the whole transaction and having to start all over again, maybe dissuading the seller from selling it to be because he would have thought it would be a scam. Then it took six business days for Auto Trader to finalize the processing of my payment. So for about eight days, I had paid for a car that I couldn't pick up. During those eight days, the communication with Auto Trader and with the seller directly was back and forth. By that time, I, the only thing I had from this seller was his name and his phone number. I didn't know where he lived. Uh, I just knew that my money was gone from my account. On one side, Auto Trader kept telling me that the seller needed to verify his identity. And this will be confusing, but please bear with me. Because Auto Trader allows you to create an account, create a profile, and post a car for sale. But those steps don't have you fully verified. So if your car sells, there's still more that you need to do. So remember that my seller was not the best at technology and communication. I mean, he was a decent uh, older gentleman, nothing against him, but it took a few more days of pulling teeth to get the process finalized. As a seller, selling a car to a private party enables you to get more for your car than if you were to sell it to places like CarMax or if you were to go trade it in at a dealership. And using PSX uh, offers you great exposure as how to trade it is one of the most established websites to buy and sell cars online. It's relatively cheap too. Uh, you pay $49 and you get 12 pictures, a full ad, and your car gets a free auto check report that allows buyers to see if your car has a good history. So yes, you could post for free in places like OfferUp, but 
buyers don't get access to your vehicle history report. When and if the car sells throughout a trader, you pay a flat fee or $99 or 0.99% of the actual transaction. So let's say the car is sold. I would have paid $49 of the ad plus $99 for a grand total of $149. The flat fee of $99 only applies to cars sold for $10,000 or less. After $10,000, the seller has to pay 0.99% of the total transaction and the buyer covers local sales tax, registration, and license fees. Now, as a buyer, PSX offers you protection measures like seller identity check to make sure that you're dealing with the actual registered owner to see if the car has an outstanding loan and if the owner has the title in hand. It also gives you the vehicle history check, like I said earlier, to review that the vehicle has a clean ownership and is accident free uh, to ensure that it matches the registration and the inspection information. And it also includes vehicle payment and paperwork. PSX handles all the paperwork and logistics for tax, title, and license processing, including collections and things like that. But buying through PSX is not cheap. I paid about $400 in documentation fees, and according to autotrader.com, it covers things like ensuring that your transaction is secure and finalized, preparing the documents, title delivery, and temporary permits to drive the vehicle. So who should use PSX? It's perfect for anyone looking for a secure, low-risk way to buy or sell a car privately, but it can be a little tedious depending on who the seller is and who the buyer is as well. And based on my experience, the website was glitchy accepting my payment, making it appear as if the payment hadn't gone through, charging me twice for the car and withholding the funds, which could have been catastrophic if it wasn't because my beloved wife jumped heroically into action and she lended me some money to cover my recurring payments in the process. But if you were not to have that option, then you'll be in the hook for any penalties and late fee transactions. Shame on my bank too for processing duplicate charges with the same reference number. So that tells you enough about artificial and human intelligence in that bank. And Auto Trader could also do a better job of verifying the buyers and sellers before they initiate the transaction so that everything is sorted out and allow for a smooth and, as they say, light and fast purchase process. That's what they call it on their website. And remember that at the beginning of my video, I said that I also sold a car through autotrader.com. Well, just know that the process was a lot faster because the buyer came with cash, made me a fair offer, and I had the title in hand. We shook hands and he took delivery of the car. I felt no need to go through PSX because I felt good about the transaction and it allowed the buyer to save some money in the documentation fee and I also kept those $99 that I would have paid out of trader me if I would have sold the car through their website. I mean, the car was advertised through their website, but I didn't finalize the process through them. And this approach not only saved money for both of us, like I said, but also saved time uh, because, I mean, we got finalized in two days. The guy sat on a Thursday, he paid it on a, on a Friday. But let me reiterate, going with PSX is the safest way to buy or sell a car to a private party if peace of mind is a priority of yours. You cannot go wrong with PSX. I try to make these reviews as fair as possible. But let me know in the comments how you feel about my impressions about PSX because I acknowledge that the human factor played a role. And I also would like to clarify that when I call them out of trader, they were uh, always easy to talk to, uh, always available. They were nice people, but they weren't getting the job done. And one thing that it was a little bit annoying is that every time I called, they said, hey, the transaction could finalize today. And it took four days from the first day they said that. So imagine me being three hours away and having to schedule the drive to go pick up the car. It was a little bit annoying. And I mean, it is what it is, right? That's one experience and that's why I'm making this video. But I would like to know from those of you that have used PSX, how was your experience? And if you recommend it, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.